Who is this beauty? This is Kunchu. I come from the foot of Kun Mountain in Suzhou. Since I was young, I have heard that over 500 years ago, Kunchu Opera spread from this area all over China. At that time, it was called Kun Mountain Opera and developed through the melding of Southern Opera of the Song Dynasty and Northern music from the Jin and Yuan Dynasties. From the middle period of the Ming Dynasty through to the Qing Dynasty, it was recognized as a kind of refined court music. In the opera field, it developed over 230 years into a unique form, and modern Beijing opera and regional operas, popular around the country, draw inspiration from and developed based on Kunchu opera. The studiers and performers of opera were the theatrical troops. These troops included masters who taught the singing as well as the movements and gestures of this art. Over several hundred years, Kunchu was passed down orally from generation to generation. Like Kunchu itself, the story of the opera Duan Qiao, or Broken Bridge, came to maturity during the Ming Dynasty. Kunchu of today still tells stories and preserves elements of many musical forms of that time. Traces of court music, popular songs, and Buddhist music from centuries past can all be found in Kunchu. Accompanying this dance are the D or bamboo flute, sheng or reed pipe, pipa, and other traditional Chinese musical instruments, the main accompaniment to kunchu operas. They completely back up the singing and are likewise a very important part of kunchu.
First, I just thought Kunshu looked nice. Later, I learned that every movement and gesture made on stage has a meaning and rules. They are called forms. These forms are open to some interpretation. Styles of form and interpretation are among the most unique and fascinating aspects of Chinese operatic art. In the opera Huo Zhuo, or the Snatch of the Spirit, the movements completely show what is felt in the characters' hearts. This story tells of a beautiful female ghost who goes among the living seeking her old lover. She follows him to another world to continue their love affair. The love and happiness of the two characters is revealed by their gestures and movements. The opera Xiao Yan, or Dinner, is a love story between an ancient emperor and his concubine. The roles in Kunchu operas are divided into five categories based on age, sex, character, and other factors. Young and middle-aged male roles are called sheng. All female roles fall under the category of dan. Jing, or painted face roles, are upright and valiant men. More roles are older men. 
Groucho, the clowns, are normally audience's favorite roles. They have amusing blots of white painted onto the middle of their faces. While both operas tell love stories, the amorous couple in Zhengjian, or Presenting the Sword, is a princess and a young military leader, so their movements are markedly different from those of the common people in Huozhuo. In a kunchu performance, the only props on stage are normally a table and two chairs, but the actors can evoke mountains, rivers, and other settings. Actors can create the feeling of a beautiful world through both evocative and abstract means that sometimes make sung words or clear movements unnecessary. The simple stage can become a convincing palace court, and song and dance can portray a moving story. In this story, a beautiful young maiden is married off to a remote foreign country as a peace treaty. She uses dramatic dance movements to show her longing for her distant family. The open stage represents the vast rivers and mountains standing between her and her home.
When I was young and studying opera, the most difficult part was the beautiful but elusive words. Years later, I learned that they are a kind of Chinese literature, Mudanting or Peony Pavilion. It was written by the scholar Tang Xianzu over 400 years ago. He was a contemporary of Shakespeare, and both used poetic words to create many classic plays. Therefore, Kunchu is also called dramatic poetry.
I once asked my teacher if Kunchu came from the folk songs of the Kun Mountain area, how did it become so poetic? He said that it was because of a man born in the Ming Dynasty named Wei Liang Fu. He revolutionized those folk songs to create polished tunes and words. The mild and beautiful tunes attracted many poets to write plays, and over time Kunchu developed into an elegant art. Works performed today, such as Mudan Ting and Changshan Dian, or Hall of Longevity, date back to those times. Over the centuries, Kunchu has gone through its ups and downs, but those classic words and beautiful songs remain. Many outstanding Kunchu operas have been preserved and passed down. Finally, it's time to take the stage. In Kunchu, makeup is complicated and all Jing characters must get their faces painted. Every character in an opera has a set makeup style. The colors and patterns represent and tell the audience about a character's nature and identity. Do you understand these characters' natures and identities? Red represents loyalty, black is a sign of valor, and gold or silver face painting means a character is a supernatural being or ghost. So, this play is about the righteous and brave deity Zhong Kui leading some ghosts to deliver the dowry for his sister.
At the start of the last century, Kunchu nearly disappeared completely. But with the government's support and many artists' hard work, some classic operas have come back to life. Recently, Kunchu has earned many new fans. 